Glory be to God. Father, we give thanks to you this evening. Hallelujah. We thank you. Father, we thank you for what you've been doing since we began this journey. Blessed be your name. Thank you for this particular evening, the day number four evening. Thank you for what you prepared for us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the angels that are gathered together with us. Thank you for bringing us into Mount Zion. Thank you because of the blood that is speaking better thing than the blood of Abel. Thank you for the company of, 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 the, of, the, of the spirit of just men that are made perfect, that have gathered with us. We have gathered together with our, the, 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 the angels of heaven and with the spirit of just men that have been perfected in glory as they watch us, as they watch us seeking to receive that which helps them. Father, we are here to obtain that which help people like Charles Finney, that which help people like John Gilek, that which help people like Smith Wigglesworth. We have come to obtain that kind of grace that will help people. Lord, 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 like Catherine Kuman, we have come to obtain the kind of key secret that help people like Apostle Paul that helped Moses, that helped Nehemiah, we have come to receive that which helped people like Daniel, people that walk through this earth and their footprints are never forgotten. We have come to obtain the same. Whatever helped them, that is what we've come for. Whatever helped them, that is what we've come for. Receive all the glory and praise forever. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you so much, sister. May God bless you immensely. Quickly, I want us to open with me to the book of Isaiah chapter 40. We're taking it from verse number 8. Isaiah chapter 40 from verse 28, rather. Verse 28. Isaiah 40 from verse 28. Glory be to God. Isaiah 40 from verse 28. I read from here. And thank you, Father. He says, has thou not, has thou not known? Has thou, sorry. Thank you, Jesus. Say, so, has thou not known, has thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainted not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint and to, the, and to them that have no, no might, he increases strength. He said, even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Thank you, Father. He says, have you not heard? Have you not heard? Has he not been told you that the one to whom you have come today, he says he is the one who, who is the fountainhead of strength. He said, has thou not known? Has that not been heard? Sorry. Has thou not known? Has thou not heard that the everlasting God, the, 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 the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, Fainted not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. Now, this is the one to whom we have come. The one who never faints, never gets tired, he's ne he doesn't grow old, he is never wearied, and his understanding is beyond human comprehension. His understanding is unsearchable, his wisdom is unsearchable. That is the one we have come to. If you go to the bank, you are supposed to come out with money. If you go to the river, you fetch water. You don't go to the river to fetch dust. You fetch water out of the river because that is what is there. We have come to the one who is the one that he, the, the, he, he has the technology that gives strength to the weak. He had the ability that supplies strength. He said he 
repented not from generation to generation, God is still God. Full of strength, full of might, never weary. Thousands of years have rolled by. The great being is still there, still there. We want to give him, give him an embrace. We want to embrace him, the source of strength, the source of energy, the one that has the understanding of every mystery on this earth. I was talking to somebody today that there is no marriage problem anywhere. There is no marriage problem. There is no family problem. We rather have wisdom problem, wisdom problem. We have understanding problem. If you have proper wisdom, proper understanding, believe me, there is nothing too complicated for you to fix. Nothing too complicated for you to fix. So we are coming to him who is the dynamo of knowledge and wisdom and understanding and strength. He can give you whatever strength you need. He has every grace you need and he's willing to give. The next verse tells me, verse number 29. Let's see 29. Glory be to God, to whom I have come with all of my heart to have a, a, a warm embrace that everything in him will flow into you even today. He said, he give power to the faith and to them that have no might, he increases strength. That means God wants you to leave this meeting with might, with strength, with power, with strength with power, with might. He increases strength. He increases strength. Sometimes your battery, phone battery grows, you know, goes, you know, um, dissipates. It's weak, it's low. That's the word. Your battery is low. What do you do? You plug it. You plug it and you charge it. So we have come to charge our battery for the journey that is set before us, for the journey. Because you know, the Bible said, if you have run with footmen and they weary you, what's going to happen when the horsemen will appear? We are charging up like the five wise virgin who stored up oil, who stored up oil. And the other five foolish virgin, they were virgin but foolish. Virgin, which means they were righteous, they were dis disciplined, they were dedicated. But they were foolish. What was the foolishness? They lacked the wisdom, the intelligence to store up oil for the rainy day, for the midnight hour when the master was going to come. So we are storing up strength. We are storing up strength for the journey that is set before us. Like Sister Ne was saying, the angel said to, um, to Elijah, Hello, Mr. Elijah, you've got to eat and be fed. There is a difference between eating and eating and be fed. Eat and be fed. Eat and be fed. Because the journey before you is strong. Okay, now look at the next verse. Glory be to God. Lord, give us power. Give us power. Increase our might, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, verse number 30. Verse number 30. He said, even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. Now this is a revelation of the state of the world today. The youths are known for their strength. The, the, the glory of the youth is what their strength. They are, they, are, they are known to be strong. And that of the ancient elderly is their wisdom, all right? But because of the vagaries of the end time, because of the activities of the enemy in the end time, because the devil certainly has gone wild against the righteous, against the youth, to corrupt them, to pollute them, to, to bombard them with all kinds of negativity. Because of it, their strength will become faint. They will grow weary. They will be faint. All right? And they will utterly fall. They will utterly fall. And that is what is going on. The youth, like people have said here, was he yesterday, we prayed for Europe. It's not only in Europe, it's the same thing everywhere. The youth are no longer interested in spirituality. They are more interested in carnality and worldliness and all kinds of manipulation. In fact, you are said to be a dynamic, very powerful youth if you have learned the, the skill of lies. If you have become skillful in lies, skillful in immorality, skillful in, 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 a, in fraudulent activities. Fraudulent activities. Some youths see people who are working to make money to be very stupid. How can you be leveraged to make money? 
get into the what we call Yahoo Yahoo, all right? Um, fraud stars, you make easy money. And by so doing, they are falling away in the pathway of destiny. He says, even the youth shall faint and be weary. And the young men shall utterly fall. But look at where we're going. Verse number 31, he said, but they that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. They that wait upon the Lord, they that will choose to sacrifice pleasure to seek God. Who will sacrifice their pleasure, their pleasure to seek God. The Bible says, they shall renew their strength. Number two, they shall mount up with wings as the eagles and shall run and shall not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. Now, you know that the strength, he said, they shall renew their strength. So we are waiting upon the Lord. This is day number four of this fast. What is What do you want to get? What, what are you taking out of this fast? One of the things God wants you to gain through this fast is called strength. And they that wait upon the Lord shall receive strength. They shall receive might. They shall receive power, spiritual power, spiritual might to trample upon serpents, upon scorpions, upon, upon lions, upon dragons, upon the beast of Ephesus, the beast of Cape Town, the beast of every city. Every city had their beast, have their, their, their Goliath to deal with the Goliath of your land, to deal with the beast of your land and to come out unruffled or wounded on hand, because he said he will give on us power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and upon all the powers of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means harm you. Nothing shall by any means harm you, but you and your, your, your family and everything that is connected to you. But do you understand what strength really means? Do you understand the Bible says in the book of Nehemiah, chapter, chapter 8, verse 10, that the joy of the Lord is the strength of the righteous. The joy of the Lord is our strength. So we are coming to this altar, to this fasting, and to this moment to do what? To renew our joy. To renew our joy. The joy of the Lord is the strength, is the strength of the believer. So what strength are we talking about? Joy. That is something the Bible calls joy, the joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord. When the joy of the Lord is flowing in you, you will see things that make people to, to give up. It rather escalates your zeal. It stays, stays you up the more. And the devil just doesn't know what to do with you because the joy is overflowing. Is overflowing. You are not moved by, by what you see. You are not moved by what people say. You are not moved by what is happening because of the river of joy that flowing in you. The joy of the Lord is the strength of the believer. Glory be to God. Now, I want you to also understand something here. In the book of Isaiah chapter 12, verse 3, the Bible says, with joy, with joy, we do what we draw, we draw, we draw water. We draw water. We draw water out of the well of salvation. We joy. God wants you to be joyful. That's the, my point. God wants you to be what? Joyful. So we are fasting to receive the capacity to be joyful in any situation we, we, are, we find ourselves in. That's what makes you a sign and the wonder. And God uses you to do wonders. When you walk in the realm of joy, you will shut the mouth of sadness and sorrow that is flooding the whole world. So therefore, with joy, when you are filled with joy, what happens? You will be able to draw out water. You will draw water out of the wells of salvation. Do you understand that there are wells around you? Wells of salvation, wells of revival, wells of power, wells of blessing, wells of riches. There, is, there are wells around you, but you can, you can be walking around wells, but you are thirsty. There are wells everywhere. There are wells of hope, of joy, of blessing, of healing, all of that world. But it takes people that are filled with the oil of joy and gladness. People that have gotten the secret called joyful living, 
joyful living, joyful living. In the midst of serious challenges, they are filled with the joy of the Lord. These are the only people that will be able to bring out light, bring out water out of the wells of salvation that are everywhere, but people can't assess it because the enemy has wounded them, beaten them down, depressed them, discouraged them, feed them with sadness and sorrow and all kinds of discouragement. So please, God is charging your battery so that you will be filled with joy. You face your husband, you face your wife, you face your children, you face your parents, you face your siblings, irrespective of the problems that people have had in the past. You say, come on, brother, come on, sister, let's let go the past. Let's rebuild, let's bring joy, let's give ourselves joy because you are carrying joy, you'll be able to give joy. Through that, you will bring out salvation. You will bring out everything that is lacking. You will bring it up through the spirit of joy. And little one that the Bible tells me in the book of Hebrews, I think Hebrews chapter 1, verse number 9. Hallelujah. He said that because thou hast loved righteousness and hated wickedness, therefore God, thy God has anointed thee with the oil of gladness. Some scripture, some translation calls it the oil of joy. The oil of joy above your fellow has anointed you with the oil of joy. There is something called the oil of gladness, oil of joy. Said thou hast loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, even thy God, has anointed thee, anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellow. So, servant of God, we are here for an oil. We are here to buy oil. We are here to obtain oil. We are here to buy oil, to obtain oil. That oil is called the oil of joy, the oil of gladness. That is the strength of the believer. And with this strength, you can shake the heavens and shake the earth for God. That is what revival means. Revival is when a woman, a man, is under the unction of God and under the presence of God, under the, the full charge of God's power. And with it, you walk into a place that is filled with sorrow and sadness and sickness and reproach and shame and evil of different kinds. And by the time you are living, everybody's changed. If not everybody, at least a good number of them have changed because you have, you have given them what you carry. You've given them what you carry. What are you carrying? It's not just about money. It's not just about knowledge. It's about an oil that makes people glad, an oil that brings healing, an oil that brings peace, an oil that brings joy, an oil that brings love, that brings one unity, that changes the character of the society, that an oil that can affect a family. That is, an, that, that, that is the volume of oil you carry to affect the whole city. That is the volume of oil you carry you to affect the entire nation. And that is what God is doing in your life. Building capacity in you so that you will be a high-powered, you know, a, you know, a cargo carrying large volume of oil to bring gladness and comfort and consolation to many people who are fainting. So prayer number one, oh God, I am here to renew my strength. The Bible tells us that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. I am here to renew my strength, and my strength is the joy of the Lord. My strength is the oil of gladness. That oil, the five wise virgins saw need, and they carried it. I'm here to carry more oil, so that with it, I will bring gladness. With it, I will pull the draw salvation, draw salvation from the wells that are all over the place, but the people don't know how to handle it. Shall we begin to pray? God, increase my strength and give me the capacity to fly. Capacity to fly, that's another thing. When you wait upon the Lord, God gives you the wings of the eagle. The wings of the eagle gives you ability to take advantage of challenges. Ability to take advantage of challenges. When the wind is blowing, when the storm comes, when it is getting stronger, other birds will take cover. They will go down. They will hide themselves. But the eagle will take advantage of the strong storm and goes high and go higher and higher. He goes, the stronger the wind, the higher the eagle rises. So, waiting upon the Lord gives you capacity to take advantage, to ride on the winds of life, on the storms of life, to higher ground. That's what it does. It helps you to how to run 
He helps you to fly. He gives you speed, divine speed. I see you cover a distance within these six months, a distance that others cover in 10 years. In 10 years, you cover it in six months. A distance others cover in 15 years, you cover it in six months. A distance others cover in 20 years, you cover it in six months. Because they that wait upon the Lord, they will receive the wings of the eagle to mount up and to fly into higher realms. I will begin to pray. Father, I am here to renew my strength. Glad Rosetta, Lariana Tosa, Patini Galentra. Please unmute, unmute and pray. Maliga da Banagadia, Le Ram Dosete Precato Ponosietre, Le Gande Satanahia, Lariento Sata, Lariente, Tatuset, the Lepranse, the Lariente, the Lariente, the Lariente, the Lariente, the Lariente, the Lariente, in jesus mighty name we pray glory be to god servant of god i hope you are aware the bible says something okay let me deal with this matter i mentioned early in the morning that i'll be looking at activators of mercy activators of mercy provokers of mercy things that stay up mercy that enlarge your 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 mercy volume the volume of mercy you are carrying remember our focus is that god will raise us as rivers of mercy rivers of mercy when a river flows into a dry land what happens that place is nourished that you become a river that will carry mercy carry grace carry fire everywhere now jesus made a, a statement in the book of matthew chapter 5 verse number 7 matthew 5 number 7 he said blessed are the merciful kai kai for they shall obtain mercy blessed are the merciful do you want to obtain mercy you want to obtain mercy then 
be merciful. If you permit me to define merciful, it is to be full of mercy. Full of mercy. You can have somebody who's all the mercy in him is just like a spoon, a spoonful. Another is a cup, a cup full. Another, it is like, like 10, a thousand liters. Another, the volume of mercy he is carrying is like a hundred, a hundred thousand liters. Another person is like an ocean. Merciful. It's the blessed and the merciful. Those who are full of mercy, full of mercy. And I can tell you, sometimes people take advantage of such people. Somebody was saying to me two days ago, he said, Pastor Light, you see, you are too good for this generation. That's why some people take advantage of you. I say, I understand. That is the nature of God. That's the nature of God. That's why God has not wiped out some of these wicked people all over the world. He is merciful, full of mercy. Abundance of mercy is known with God. So the more godly you become, the more merciful you become. Yes, some people will take advantage of it, but the more that is like going to the ocean, you are collecting water, you are stealing water. Let me go to the ocean, I steal water. The more you are stealing, the more the water is multiplying. That's the mystery. The blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. You want to carry heavy, heavy voltage of mercy in order to wipe tears in this generation where people are fainting, dying in agony, in pain, in misery, and the devil is enjoying it. You want to be a vessel of mercy, a vessel of mercy, then be merciful. The more you give, the more you receive. That's how it works. You know, in the book of Psalm 18, verse 23, 25, brother, please give it to me. Psalm 18, verse 20, 25. The Bible says, with the merciful, with the merciful, those who are full of mercy, I will show myself merciful. That is God. So with the merciful, thou will show thyself merciful. And with an upright man, thou will show thyself upright. That's how it works. What you give is what you receive. If you give mercy, you will receive mercy. With the merciful, thou shall show thyself merciful. So you want to be a woman that everybody will know that this woman has found mercy. God has shown her mercy. God has shown her family mercy. Then be merciful. Be merciful. To be merciful to those who are in pain, who are suffering, to the children of other women. And God will also show mercy to your own children. That's how it works. You know, Jesus was saying also in Matthew chapter 6, verse 14. He said, if you forgive, if you forgive, Men, your brothers, your sisters, your relations, your neighbor, your colleague, if you forgive them their sin, your heavenly father will also forgive you your sin. He said, For if you forgive men their trespass, their sin, their mistakes, your heavenly father will also forgive you. That's how it works. So I want you to pray this morning, or this evening rather. One of the key to, 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 to uh, what do you call it? To mercy is what? Be merciful to people. Be kind-hearted. Be generous to people. That's how it works. Number two, you know, provokers of mercy or things that cause mercy to multiply is called repentance. In the book of um, Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 28, verse 13. Proverbs 28, verse 13. Thank you, precious Father. He says, Proverbs, are you there? Thank you, Jesus. All right, because of time, now he, okay, he said, he that covered his sins shall not prosper, but whosoever confesses and forsaken them shall obtain what? Mercy. He will obtain mercy. So the key to obtaining mercy is what? Confess your sins and forsake them. Many Christians live in sin secretly. They cover it up. I have learned from experience, if you keep covering your sin, God will expose it. 
at the most dangerous moment. I've seen it happen. God is calling your attention, repent and confess your sin, forsake your sin. But you continue in it, thinking it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. When you cover your sin, God will expose it. And when God exposes somebody's sin, it can be very painful. But when you expose your sin, what happens? God will cover you. When you expose your sin by confessing, not that you go to the internet or go to the public and announce your sin. No, that's not what we're talking about. But like you've heard me here say, every Christian learn to have what I call your accountability partner. Somebody that is so close to you. If you make mistakes, we all make mistakes in one way or the other. You go to your accountability partner. And your accountability partner can be your spouse. But if your spouse is not in the spiritual position to be play that role, then it could be your pastor. It could be a man of God or a woman of God that you trust will not encourage you in your error, but will inspire you and challenge you and encourage you, you know, to come out of that pit and live a better life without exposing it to the world. Such people, you need them in your life because we are on a race. We are in a race. The devil wants you to fall. So you need somebody who will hold hand with you so that you will run well. If you make mistakes, don't cover your sin. He that covereth his sin shall not prosper. But whoever confesses and, co and uh, forsaketh them shall obtain mercy. I see a similar thing also in the book of Isaiah, chapter 55. Isaiah 55, verse number 7, if I'm not mistaken. Isaiah 55, verse 7. Thank you, precious Father. Let's say be your name. Isaiah 55, verse, verse 7. Right. He says, let the wicked forsake their ways. Let the wicked forsake their ways. And the unrighteous man, his thoughts. And let them return unto the Lord. And he will have mercy upon them. And to our God. For he will abundantly pardon. Abundantly pardon. So the key to what? To, to having the mercy of God or obtaining the mercy of God, receiving the mercy of God in abundance is to do what? To forsake every wicked way, every wicked way, every unrighteousness. Please avoid it, run away from it, hate it, draw the boundary line. Others can do this, not me. And as you do so continuously and continually, and God is well pleased, look at the rest of He said, and let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy. He will have mercy upon him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. The last thing I want to share with us that will help you to grow in the grace and in the mercy of God is what I found in a young man that distinguished himself. Nobody knows his name. I mean, he, his name, rather, is associated or linked to his problem. He's called the blind Bartimaeus. In the book of Luke chapter 18, if you read from verse, I think verse 38 down, the blind Bartimaeus, a blind man, all his life was blind. And he has suffered the, the reproach and shame of being a blind man, a blind, helpless beggar. And then he has heard of this man called Jesus of Nazareth the son of David. He has had stories of what people, of what he has done to many people everywhere. And then suddenly where he was begging, he had footsteps. He had footsteps. He felt there was an unusual movement. And he inquired, who is this? What is going on? Is it war? Are people running? No. They told him that that man, Jesus of Nazareth, he is passing. And this man began to scream. He didn't see where Jesus was. Whether Jesus was still far or was close by, he didn't want to know. All he knew was that Jesus was passing. So he began to scream, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. And the people were telling, telling him, keep quiet, you are making noise, you are distracting prominent people. You are disturbing reputable, dignified people that we are following this man. Keep quiet. And he shouted yet the more, thou son of David, have mercy on me. The Bible said that Jesus could not resist his voice. Jesus stopped. 
Jesus stopped and commanded those who were telling him to keep quiet. He commanded them, you go and bring him. Don't silence him. Don't stop him. You have sight, you can see. But this guy is blind. He is crying out of the pain, out of the humiliation, out of the reproach and frustration he had lived in. And you can't stop him at this moment. He said, bring him. And when he came, I said, what would you have me do for you? That I might have my sight. I might have my sight. And he said, let it be unto you according to your faith. His eyes open. Now, what is the point there? I call it passionate outcry. How can I have access to grace, to mercy? Passionate outcry. Passionate outcry. He said, let us come boldly, boldly to the throne of grace. And that's where we have come. That we might find mercy. That we might obtain mercy and grace to use in time of need. Let us come boldly. Let us come boldly. Cry out boldly. Cry out. Let nothing distract you. Let nobody distract you. Cry boldly, boldly, courageously, violently, desperately, violently. Son of David, have mercy on me. You cannot cry for mercy and God harden his heart. You cannot cry. Somebody said there are two things, two prayers God will never carry on his back. Number one is the cry for mercy. Lord, I know I deserve judgment, but please show me mercy. God, show me mercy. God, show my husband mercy. Show my wife mercy. Show my children mercy. Show me mercy. Number one, cry for mercy. Number two, God, remember me. God, remember me. God, remember me. So when you join the two, God in your mercy, remember me. You can, you can break any wall. God in your mercy, remember my family. God in your mercy, remember my situation. God in your mercy, remember my daughter. God in your mercy, remember my son. Call on, keep praying that prayer. Blind Bartimus cried it. He cried it until Jesus could not stand it. He told he stopped and told him, you go get this guy. His cry has captured my attention. So this, among God, I will stop here on this matter. I will take it to another level, another moment. How do you grow in grace? Number one, confess your sins, forsake them. Depart from every form of wickedness and unrighteousness, and God will show you mercy. How do you grow in grace? In mercy, rather, what did I call it? Cry out passionately. Number three, be merciful. Be merciful. Be merciful. You can't be asking God to show you mercy. And then you, you, are, you are reproachful. You are oppressing people. You are oppressing people. So hard, difficult, dealing with people everywhere. And you're asking God to show you mercy. It doesn't work that way. Because whatever man saw, that he shall receive. So I want us to begin to pray. And I've spoken a lot at this point. God, please. Grant me the capacity to, to cry for mercy. Even now, we are going to cry for mercy. And God, help me. Help me to be merciful. Help me to be merciful from today, to be merciful. Beginning from home, I have seen that sometimes people are more merciful to outsiders than to people in their family. Some people is the opposite. Some people, they are more kind. I've heard women at different times say, Pastor, don't mind him. He's just generous to people everywhere, but at home he's stingy. I told you a story of a young man. I don't know if it is here. I was sharing it. A, 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 a woman brought a, a girl to me that this girl had joined Satanism. Satanism. And can you please save my daughter? I asked the girl, is it true? She said, yes. Why did you do that? I said, because my father is a very active leader in a Pentecostal church. Everybody sees him as assistant to Jesus. But at home, my father turns like into a dragon, oppressing my mom, oppressing me, oppressing everybody. And I felt, if this man is acting like this, if if this man is acting like this in church and at home, he is like a devil. Let me rather make Satan my father. So he said to me, Pastor, unfortunately, I cannot return because I have entered into covenant with Satan and I've made Satan my father. My father now is Satan, not my biological father, not God, not Jesus. I've chosen Satan to be my father. My heart broke. 
how that hypocrisy, hypocrisy has destroyed the girl. But thanks be to God, before that girl left me that day, she broke down and renounced Satan, renounced Satan and gave her heart back to Jesus Christ. I can't explain how joyful the mother was. There's no way to describe the joy that captured the mother in that meeting. What am I trying to say? I want us to cry, God, help me to be merciful. Help me to be merciful to people. Number two, God, help me to keep away from anything that will offend you. you there is no sin you commit now that people haven't committed before. So there is no me trying to pretend as if you, have, you don't make any mistake. If you make a mistake, please go to somebody you trust and tell the person your mistake. That's how the Bible puts it. Confess your sins and you will prosper. Cover your sin and you will not push back. We stop. So shall we go ahead and begin to pray? I've spoken a mouthful in the name of Jesus. Father, I'm calling upon you here this hour. Can we unmute, unmute, unmute Lord, God Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Servants of God. I, I, I want to use the remaining time to, to, to bring up what the Lord showed me in the course of the night. In the course of the night, I couldn't raise it up this morning, but I want to share it with you this morning. You remember the story of, of uh, what is it now? The story of Ezekiel chapter 37, where we know of the valley, we've read about the valley of dry bones. The valley, the valley of dry bones. And the bones were so dry, so dry, that it's only God who could imagine how good can come out of that valley of dry bones. And then God asked him, he asked Ezekiel, can these dry bones live? And uh, Ezekiel says, sir, only you know, you want me, you want me to come out of my mouth? I will not speak. It is you that know. Because you can see how dry these bones are. How can they live? Then God told him to prophesy. And as he prophesied, suddenly there was a wind. A wind. A wind began to blow. A wind began to blow. And the wind began to search out the bones of each man. These bones of each man. Wherever they were kept. Wherever the ants, rats, and the, the, the wind and, and, and maybe uh, 
a flood or water carried the piece of the bone to. The wind gathered them. And the Lord began to speak to me about the wind of mercy. Wind of mercy. He said, I want a wind of mercy to blow. I want the flood, the river of mercy to flow. What I was hearing is wind of mercy blow. Wind of mercy blow. River of mercy flow. Wind of mercy blow. Wind of mercy blow. River of mercy flow. And as the wind of mercy began to blow and it began to blow, the bones of Mr. John and Mr. Peter, Mr. Andrew, we are gathered together. Wherever they were scattered, the bones came together. And the Lord began to say to me, he said that human beings are like puzzles. Like a puzzle. You know, when you are building a puzzle, maybe let's say the puzzle is like a ball, a football, a football. All right? And you are fixing it. When you see it scattered on the table, it doesn't make sense. There's no way to explain that this piece of thing will form a round object called ball. How? But as you begin to connect them together, connect them together, connect them together, before you know it, the pieces that were scattered over the floor or table form a round object called ball and children can play with it. He said that people's life is like a puzzle. When it is in its natural state, it's like nothing good can ever come out of it. But when the supernatural comes, when the wind of mercy comes, when the wind of mercy comes, when the wind of mercy comes, come, it will gather the peace together. And then you see pastor life is completed. You see, you know, sister Ne is completed. You see, you know, brother Z is completed. You see pastor Basel in his complete form. You see Dr. Cindy in her complete form. You see pastor Laven in her complete form. It wasn't so at the beginning. We were still piece of puzzles scattered all over. But when the wind of mercy blow, it will gather me together. It will gather you together. And then the full picture will show. The full picture will form. By the time the man prophesied, what happened? The bones came together. Bones came together. I began to hear the Lord said, I am gathering your bones together. I'm putting your bones together. The bone of John did not go to the bone of John, Joseph. The bone of Lucy did not go to this bone, the, the bone of Lucia. Every born went to where it belonged. There is divine connection coming in your life. Divine alignment. Divine alignment coming to bring out your complete person. Some of us circumstances have scattered our life. This is not the you, the you in God's program. Father, let the wind of mercy blow in my life, blow in my family, and align my family. Align me, align me together. Align, let the wind of mercy blow in the life of my children and pick up every piece of each one of them and couple them together so that the beauty, the divine plan, that divine you, the divine picture of you, of your husband, your wife, your sons, your daughter, the real picture will come to shape. And when, uh, what's his name, Ezekiel saw the bones, he was shocked. He was shocked. And then he, the Lord told him, prophesy again. As he prophesied, the flesh came, sinew came, everything came. Eventually skin came. And then he prophesied and the spirit came. He said, what has happened here is the drama. I'm giving you a drama. It is the state of Israel. They said, we are finished. We are dead. We are buried. We are in the grave. Nothing good will come out of us. We are finished. But I will make them to come out of their grave. I will make them to come out of their grave. Your daughter is coming out of her grave in this meeting. Your son is coming out of his grave in this meeting. Your husband is coming out of his grave in this meeting. Your wife is coming out of her grave in this meeting. Your family is coming out of their grave because the wind of mercy will blow and fix what the devil has scattered and the whole army will come out. Shall we begin to pray? Prayer. This is my prayer, last prayer. Please, this is the major prayer I came out here with this morning, be this evening. Begin to pray. Oh God, gather me together. Let my bones come together. That out of me, out of my family, shall rise a 
Amen. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 My God. And unto them. Thus says the Lord, thus says the Lord God, behold, all my people, all my people, all my people, I will open your graves and cause you and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. Bring you where you belong. I'll bring you where you belong. You have been in the wrong place. I'll bring you where you really belong. And ye shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves 
oh my people and brought you up out of your graves and put my spirit and shall put my spirit in you and you shall live you shall live that girl shall live that boy shall live that man shall live that woman shall live that family shall live he says and i will place you in your own land then you then shall ye know that i am the lord I, the Lord, have spoken it, and I will perform it, says the Lord. Servant of God, I want you to pray finally. Lord, perform your good word concerning me. Fulfill the prophecy of my life. Fulfill the prophecy. Perform. Do things in my life by mercy, by the grant of mercy. I am calling, Lord, others may qualify for this. I don't qualify. I'm asking for mercy. Do it on the basis of mercy. Do it on the basis of mercy. Other women like me have lived the godly life from the beginning. I didn't. Other men lived the godly life from the beginning. I didn't. Hence, I'm calling you, God, remember mercy. In your judgment, remember mercy. And perform your good wishes, your good plan, the original plan you have for my life. Let it be performed. Take me to where I belong. Take me to where I belong. Plant me. I'll pull me out of this wrong place and reposition me into my mandate, into my mission, into my life, into my life. Let me live the life I am created to live in fullness on the basis of mercy, mercy. Let mercy reposition me. Please, shall we begin to pray? Sorry, that's my last prayer. My father, Nagadiana. Ah, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Ah, oh my God. Oh my God. I see bones coming to bones. Bones coming to bones. Hi. Bones coming to bones. Divine alignment. Divine connection. Divine connection. God is connecting you to the right people. God is connecting you to the right people. Connecting the right people to you. Wasters shall not locate you anymore. Every waster of destiny around you, I command them to be uprooted. Hi. Every waster of destiny around your children, around your sons and daughters, I command those wasters to be uprooted, uprooted by fire, uprooted by fire, uprooted on the premise of the mercy, the mercy, the mercy of God. In the name of Jesus, every waster of destiny that has caught hold of your husband, that has caught hold of your wife, I command by the wind of mercy, let such waster of destiny be blown away, blown away, blown away. In the name of Jesus, every waster of destiny around you, I cast them in the name of Jesus. Every waster of destiny, let them be uprooted, 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 uprooted. In the name of Jesus, your destiny shall not be wasted. The destiny of your family shall not be wasted. 
the destiny of your children shall not be wasted by the hand of the Almighty. Let there be a divine alignment, divine alignment with the right people, divine alignment with the right relationship, divine alignment with destiny helpers, 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 divine alignment with destiny helpers that I don't deserve, that you don't deserve, that we don't deserve, that we don't deserve, but the hand of God gathered them from east, west, north, and south, from across the globe, from within Africa, from within Asia, from within Europe and the United Kingdom, from within Australia and Oceania, from within North, South, and Central America, I call for divine helpers, divine helpers, align to you, align to you, align to your family, align to me, align to my family, divine helpers, divine helpers, in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, my God. Mercy has intervened. <laughs> Mercy has intervened. Mercy has intervened. Mercy has intervened. Mercy has intervened. Mercy has taken over. Mercy has shut the mouth of judgment. Mercy has shut the mouth of the law. Mercy, 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 mercy has disrupted the order or disrupted the protocol, disrupted the protocol. Mercy has disrupted the protocol and rearranged everything for the good of you, for your good, for your good, because you have chosen to wait upon the Lord. And they that wait upon the Lord shall end up mounting up with wings like the eagle. Let wings be given to you, be given to your household, be given to your family, be given wings of the eagle, wings of the eagle, Wings of the eagle, wings of the eagle, because of mercy, because of mercy, wings of the eagle, because of mercy, wings of the eagle, mm -hmm. to arise and to ascend great heights, to arise and ascend great heights, to arise and ascend great heights. Amen. Oh my goodness. Eyes have not seen, mm -hmm. ears have not heard. It hasn't entered into the heart of any man what God has prepared for you. And that is what we are bowing our knee to say, Lord, let it happen now. Let it happen now. This is the appointed time for the fulfillment of your promises. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mercy has written your story. Servant of God, mercy has rewritten your story. Mercy has rewritten your story. Mercy has rewritten your story. Ah, thank you. Lord, I'm grateful. Can somebody just begin to thank God? Please begin to thank Amen. him. Unmute and begin to thank him. Mercy has changed the story. Mercy has changed the story. Begin to thank him. Give 